Hi guys, uh, welcome to part two, I guess, of the Britannia, made by Dapol. Um, as you know, this one's got sound in it. Um, there's no stay alive, unfortunately. Although, whilst I'm in here, I might see if there's any space for one. It doesn't necessarily need it. I've not actually had the sound cut out on me once with this. I think it's just purely because most of the loco has a pickup for power, which is great. It does need a bit of a clean because um, there's bits of dust on it. Anyway, that aside, um, I've been waiting for some LEDs to come in the post. Now, I don't know if you can see this. I'll hold it against the loco. Uh, this is a 0403 surface mount LED. Um, now, these come pre wired. <laughs> Good for me. Um, and this one here is a warm white. So I'm going to put this one on the front, and I've also got, these are as small as I could get them, they're 3mm LEDs, but these ones are, they flicker, so the idea is, um, the Hornby TTS module kicks out front running light and a rear running light, so directional lights, so I'm going to put the, um, the white light on the front, red light on the back of the tender and one of those flickering LED lights in the cab but what I'm going to do is make the cab light the auxiliary function on the TTS so when I turn on the auxiliary that will get the flicker and then when I go forwards the, 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 the front light will come on um, I'm not too keen on having a forward running light and a rear running light i.e. Like a, like a white a white oil lamp at the front and a red oil lamp at the back mainly because I'm gonna have coaches on this so for me um, I'm just trying to think what you typically have is like a brake van at the back of your rake or the back coach I believe would have a red run-in light so I can always put one a red light in those at a later date um, it's, you're just a little bit limited with turning lights on and off with the Hornby TTS chips. So I think what I'm going to do is go for a white, a red, and the the firebox light effectively with these, and see how we get on. Uh, this might be a complete failure, but <laughs> I'll show you as I go. Um, I'm also tempted. That was what I was thinking was actually taking the whole loco apart to feed the wires through it. But um, the more I think about this, I don't think I'm actually going to do that. I think I'm going to sort of make it work. But if it, well, I don't want to just take it apart and screw it up. Um, what I might do is actually feed the wire underneath the boco so that it doesn't hit anything. All the wires basically have to get into the tender. So this tender top has to come off. So we'll do that next. So if you've got one of these, you'll have varying degrees of difficulty getting these on and off. Um, mine's been on and off a few times, so it's not too hard to take off. So if we look on the back here, can you see this little... Uh, no, oh, I'm not sure actually. Maybe not. Google would be a best friend really, but um, I, th I assumed that that little piece and the one on the other side were the lamps. It was just a moulding. I don't think they are actually looking at it. So I'll Google it quick and we'll have a look. I think, yeah, definitely Google that. So here's our predicament, which actually I think I've got a bit more space in there than I thought I had, actually. Which is daft. There's quite a lot of space in these. I could probably, actually looking at this, you could probably put the motor in there. There's actually enough space if you took... You have to take it apart and do it all properly, but for me, this works absolutely fine as it is. But I'm going to fit the LED down in there, just above that prop shaft. See where the aluminium is. I'll probably, um, sorry, the camera keeps focusing in and out. Yeah, I'll probably put the LED about there for the firebox. And I've just got to work out where to wire it onto uh, the chipboard. And getting that, getting access to that is going to be interesting. Because the wires I need to get to are down here. 
Yes. So, that's that. Let me just Google these rear lights a second. Okay, so I'll flick an image up now. And um, so you can see that there's one lamp at the front. Now, also in this picture, there's two at the front. So if we go back to the one with the one at the front, um, I'm going to go for that look because, well, it's less wiring for me, but I also prefer it. I don't think, uh, to me, I think one would have made more sense back in the day because why would you have two? to use two times the oil and stuff it doesn't make I would use one and also I've had a look at the tender rear end um, these are eyelets these two things I, I thought that they were trying to model lamps but they're not so I think this is how they used to um, basically like crane possibly crane off certain parts of the body or something or pick the tender off the track or something so from what I can see I haven't seen a lamp on the back which is interesting. I think this loco, just having a quick look around on the internet, if this was, um, I don't think this would be pushing a rake of coaches normally and having like a, a, a red light at the back. So you can get pretty deep into these, these trains. Well, what I'm actually going to do is put the white light on the front, put a firebox light inside, and then at a later date, depending on what I'm pulling, which will probably be those three coaches that I'll, we'll have a look at later on, I think. But I'll probably put a um, brake light on the back of one of those. So I think that's the way to go. But what I'll do, you see, is, is I'll, I won't make that light function from this. I'll just make it so that, that the, the, the oil lamp on the coach is powered from the track. So this is all a bit long-winded, but I kind of want it to be half right. So we'll go for the light on the front, firebox light. Um, and I think the first thing to do here is um, for me to look at the wiring for this chip. So we're going to need directional lighting, and it will be the forward light, which I believe is a white wire. And I need to just find that. Because as you can see, it's all a bit tight in there. What I might have to do is actually remove the motor just to get access again. Which I'm not looking forward to, but we shall see. So um, what I'll do is I'll flash up the wiring diagram here. So you can see what I'm going to be wiring into. So if you want to copy it in a way, then you can do. And um, I'm just going to have a play with this off screen and we'll be back in a second. Okay, so I've just cracked the glue off this motor. That was actually really stuck in there. Um, and the drive shaft's just hanging loose inside. So this is, this is what you got. Um, what I need to do is just basically get access to this chipboard. So put the motor back there for a minute. Yeah, so let's zoom in. In my case, what I did, let's see if that focuses, I left little stubs of wiring, you shouldn't really do this in case they short out, but that's the white wire I need for the front light, this one here, and we've got a yellow one hiding in there which is for um, reverse, or the the rear oil lamp if you if you like, what I might do is whilst I'm here is just unsolder these from the chipboard so there's no shorts. I'm pretty sure this green one here is my auxiliary so that means I'm gonna need that one I believe for the uh, auxiliary channel and pretty sure again I need to check this but uh, hmm, there's a I think it's this blue one what I'll do, just refer to the wiring diagram, I'll put it up here again for you now, as to how to wire it. That's me showing you how to do it, because that'll be me editing the video and knowing how to do it. So, at the moment this is all just guesswork. But Okay, so what I would recommend is 
do like a dry run when you're wiring things up so I know roughly what I've got to wire to I would recommend every light that you put on your loco so say you're doing forward lights and reverse lights don't share the resistor between the lights put a resistor for each LED um, so that the brightness of them if they're both on at the same time stays consistent so here is the light flickering LED that we've got. I've cut the terminals right down. Um, and what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to put a 1 kilo ohm resistor. It, for me, uh, I don't really care which way I do this, but I'm going to put it on one of the terminals. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire this to the auxiliary channel on the chipboard, put the whole thing on track, and make sure it works. If it doesn't, then I know I just need to flip the wires around for the going to the resistor or to the LED because uh, LEDs only work one way round with the polarity and as you can see like th these are the resistors they're so small and uh, this is how this is just these are surface mount um, SMD resistors so that's why they're so small I think these ones as well are zero four zero three pretty sure they are that's the sort of like their size of resistance. So I'm gonna use a 1K, one kilo ohm resistor for my flashing uh, firebox LED. And we'll see how we get on with that. But I'm not sticking them in the loco yet. I'm just gonna wire them to the board. And then what I'm gonna do for the front running LED, because I don't want it to be mega bright, I just want it to be illuminated, is I've got a 10 kilo ohm resistor here same 0403 SMD format. Um, I'm going to try one of these. I still think it's going to be too bright, so I might end up putting two of these. One, so it'll be 20 kilo ohms, so it'll be two in series to get the desired brightness. Now, a lot of decoders that you get, you're actually able to control the brightness of the LEDs, but with the Hornby TTS chips, you can't do that, and that's where they are cut. There are limits to the to the chips, they're quite cheap chips but I, I mainly bought this for the sound so in mechanical ways I can achieve the brightness of the LEDs that I'm after and that's the theory anyway so what we'll do is I'll get this all wired up ready and we'll just see what we've got brightness wise and whether the lights work or not it's like diddy wiring so this LED is 3 mil, as I've said. So I pre-tin the wires. And if you if you can, what you want to try and do is put the solder on and apply the heat at the same time on the terminals and it stays like this shiny colour. Sorry, my camera's just too just not good enough to get zoomed in. What I'm trying to do here is pick up a resistor. And you'll see it fits between the terminals. Oh my gosh. I am struggling to actually see this. I'm doing this as small as I can to save space. Uh, that's not perfect. <laughs> that's not good at all. Um, it's just so tiny. What is I'll go in this side. That should be it there. Alright, ain't for the faint of hearted, that's for sure. And you've got to be careful you don't get too much heat into things as well, otherwise you basically smush them and mess them up. So, I'll try and zoom in on this. This is our LED with the uh, one kilo ohm resistor soldered on there. So now what I'll do <laughs> is put, I can't, my fingers are too big. I'm gonna try and solder onto, obviously this terminal and that terminal. I'm not too worried about polarity. I just need to get the wires on here because once the wires are on, then I can just, uh, if, if it doesn't light up, I'll just reverse the wires on the chipboard end. Yeah, they're soldered on now. Um, It'll take you 
uh, it's more of a feel thing when you get to the size because it's just a tiny. Let's see if I can show you it. Where is it? There it is. So this is what I've done. Um, unfortunately, right, so this is everything. I've gone for a flickering LED because the decoder, I cannot program the auxiliary light to flicker. Whereas again, on other decoders, you've got that function, you can do that. So you could use a smaller LED. Okay, so what I've done is I've actually wired up the front light. Um, I've got carried away there. What I've done is I've actually got one, two, three, four. There's 40,000 ohms here, which is quite a lot. And this light is just starting to dim on me. That's it on full chat. Now, I think I'm going to leave it like that. So that neat, I'm going to have to put four of these resistors in series to get that, which is, it's not super bright. It probably comes out quite bright on the camera, but it's, you see in the, in the light, it's not amazingly bright. There you go. Now I'll just turn it off. So it's just a, a glow, if you like. And that's what I'm going for. Um, so the next thing to do, I'll go back to putting this uh, firebox light on. Right, okay, so I turn the light off. This was a lot of messing around because I was clicking the wrong button on DCC. It's function 18 for the fire, well, for the auxiliary light. So I've got this wired up now, so if I click that. It's quite hard to see on the camera, but you can see it's flickering there. Um, so what I'm probably going to do, yeah, that's good. Um, hmm. So turn that off. On, off, on, off. That works, that's great. What I've done here, um, <sighs> I've put a 1K resistor on the chipboard. I'm hoping this will come out okay. Let's turn this on. That's, this stuff is so small, it's really hard to get a focus on it. And you're, not, you're not going to see it that well, I don't think. But, I will try. So yeah, um, this little thing here is the resistor. And then this little red wire comes off of that bit, just there. So, well actually, it's technically a negative, but this, this blue wire here, I've kept it blue because it's the blue wire on the TTS. So the blue wire from the TTS goes to the LED, and the LED comes back to the top of this resistor, and then this is effectively the green pin. So that's the auxiliary channel, and that's function 18. Um, I was getting thrown because it's a, I think that's different to what's on the diesels. But now I know, so that's good. Directional lighting's easy enough. Uh, so really, now, it is just a case of putting the lights in and seeing, seeing how we get on. Um, so I'll have a play with that and I'll show you what I end up with. Okay, so I'll get more involved with showing you how to do the wiring in a second, but what I need to do here is on the front of the loco, that piece there, I'm just going to snap it off and I'm going to put a drill through so I can feed wires underneath because that's where my light is going to be in the middle. So it's um, you could probably use a 1mm drill bit. I've only, the smallest I've got is 1.6, so that's what I'm going to go for. So I'll drill that and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so as you can see, I've drilled the hole there for this LED to go down. And I'll just put a dot of sepia glue on it, <coughs> with it obviously aiming forwards. And I'm not too worried about it looking like a lamp just yet, I'll sort that out later. But it's important for me to fix that, because I don't want to move the wires around too much on the end of that light bulb, otherwise it they can come off and they're a nightmare to get back on. Okay, um showing you this. Um so the light so the hole is just there, so the bogey's just to one side. And the wires come up and through and I've weaved them actually behind all this stuff down here. 
and it's it's super glued to the bottom the underside of the the uh the panel above the wheels and then actually where this is here just behind that there's a gap to get into the cab so then the, the wires come out through the back now at this point what you can do um is like get a black marker pen maybe or a bit of black paint and just paint that in black if you wanted to um it is strategically dabbed with super glue so that it isn't going to drop and go into the wheels because that wouldn't be good but um it's all tight and I'm, i've put it in places where you're probably not going to see it so yeah i think i'm happy with that and uh, i'll show you the light on the front looks like that at the moment tiny little thing so we'll come to that in a bit because I think it needs to be white with a little hole in the front so we'll get on with soldering some more wires okay so I've got the board back down and you can see on the left try and zoom in for you get some more light on the situation it's really hard to see we've got the light in there and on the left is they're the lights for the front light and on the right they're the lights for that firebox light and they feed I've just touched them with super glue either side of the cab so that, because the prop shaft runs up in the middle and then they run basically to the center there and under the PCB so these wires for example are for the front running light the other two are actually wired up um, so this little one here, when the motor goes back down, the, the four resistors that are 10k each will go on here, and then that will go to the red wire, and the blue wire goes onto the PCB, and then we, sh we should be good. So I'm going to wire that up, and then we'll give it another test. Um, it's important just to keep testing it as you're going through, because if you don't, what you'll probably find is you're like, it doesn't work at the end, you're like, damn, uh, I've got to take the whole thing apart again, so just do it in steps. Um, I've just tacked the wires back in place. It's not pretty at the moment. This is just another check. So we'll check our front light. And we have got a front light. Um, for me, that's a little bit too bright. But it's as dim as I can get it before it doesn't light up. And actually, in daylight, it's it's like that. It's not, it's not mega bright. It's just at night time you can see it like that. I'm not overly fussed actually, I, I, it's, it's hard to show you, but that looks pretty good in person. I'll turn that off, which is great, that works. Um, and we've got the firebox light, let's fingers crossed that works. Haha, <laughs> <coughs> yep, that works. It could, obviously it could be doing, it could do with being lower, but um, I think that works a treat actually. It's on fire. I think I think these were orange. Uh, yeah, orange flickering LEDs. You can get yellow, but I thought we'd go orange. A bit warmer. That's pretty neat. See it just flickering. Uh, so I'll put the motor back in and we'll give it a run. Um, let's try the front light with it. <laughs> awesome. Um, I think so. A rear light would be. On the back of the coaches, something like that. So once I'm happy with all the way it runs, um, there's a few things like this rail just up here. I'm just going to neaten it all up. Yeah, I'm well happy with that. So turn the light off and the it's function 18 on mine. The uh, on a steam train TTS, I think it's function 18 on all of them. So you can turn it on and off. So yeah. Put it back together and we'll give it a run. Okay, before I show you it, I'm just going to show you this. Now the light on the front, in the middle there, <laughs> you can't even see it. Even with me zoomed in. Um, I'll point it out with the knife. So this little thing here is the LED, and I've actually just gone over it with a black marker pen. And that's what it looks like way better so we'll get into the video now <laughs> okay so let's give it a test so i think first things first we'll get your fire going so 
Look like they'll fire up. Oh look, that looks ready. Get the old lamp working. Oh, that looks like it's working. Start her up and off we move. Alright guys, well that's about it from me now, uh, with this one, uh, it just needs a bit of a de-dust I think with a brush or something, but thanks for watching this, um, and I would advise not putting lights in your Engage logos because it, <laughs> it's really time consuming, it's taken me ages, and not only that, this front light, which is now black, you can't see it, um, I had to redo it because I, I put 12 volts directly on the light and blew it, so... If you do put a dot of super glue on, you can remove it again, but um, out of sight is a, the best way for most of the wiring, I think. Uh, but it's turned out a lot better than I thought, which is great uh, because I didn't want to do it again. Uh, and I think what will be probably next up at some point, maybe in another video, is how I put an LED possibly on the rear brake van because this thing needs pickups in order to get power to it and that would make sense on a, a, a train like this so I'll make it probably take 12 volts from the track or something like that I'll make my own pickups and just show you how I do it generally um, there wasn't too much of a show you how I'm soldering in this one because uh, the time is now four o'clock and I've spent since like 8 a.m. putting two light bulbs in that Britannia so not the best use of my time to be honest with you but um, I wanted to do it and it can be done so um, out of all this I would say uh, solder your wires to your LEDs first and then probably solder them onto the, the your, solder them onto your PCB because you can't really do it the other way around not very well so uh, thanks for watching hopefully this helped and stay tuned for some more videos because I've got some weird ass stuff coming out I've got um let's see if you can guess what this is gonna be so <laughs> all right see you in the next one cheers bye